Coaches, welcome back to another reflection on our U11 boys basketball team. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I'm actually excited to be joined by one of my assistants with this team, Greg Hoffman. And actually, Greg is going to share eight lessons he learned today uh, coaching our first two basketball games with this U11 team. Uh, I actually wasn't able to be there. I had already committed to be um, out of town for something during this week leading up to it. And I was supposed to get back on Friday and then uh, my flight got canceled and the next flight I could get was on Sunday. So I couldn't be there for our games and Greg uh, manned the ship. And just a couple notes about Greg that I think are unique and to set a little background for the conversation, uh, this is Greg's first time coaching basketball. I uh, grew up involved in sports, but uh, didn't play basketball in high school, has never coached basketball before. So this is new for him, which honestly I love, kind of a blank slate, and he's been uh, awesome in it, willing to learn, and I think having some fun. And so, uh, yeah, Greg kind of got thrown into the fire today, and after uh, the second game was over, he sent me a, a detailed reflection on the game, which was fantastic. He sent me, uh, he called them FIFA-style ratings. Um, if you play FIFA, you know how uh, players get ratings after the match when you play with them. Um, he sent me FIFA ratings for each of our athletes with two or three bullet points about what they did well and what they need to get better at. Um, and then he sent me a couple notes on each of the games, uh, what went well, what didn't go so well. And then he sent me a list of eight things he learned today. So with that, Greg, thanks for being on the podcast, and let's talk about these eight things. All right, we'll start out. So uh, first and foremost, as Luke said, um, yeah, first time coaching basketball. Did I know what I was doing? No. Have I listened to Luke's podcast? Yes. Um, so we'll go in from there. Um, All right, number one, you said this, and I want you to say more about it. It's okay to tell a player that they're being selfish and hurting the team. Uh, there was a player that... Uh, struggled uh in in one of the games to play his role and it really hurt the team uh in a stretch free game say more about what you learned there yeah so you know when i'm coaching this game one of my first thoughts is these guys are fifth grade i just want to make them like me you know trust me and trust what i'm going to tell them to do um so when we got i mean we were maybe four or five minutes into the first half and this kid is our biggest, probably most athletic, probably most developed for a fifth grader. And I'm telling you, like, anytime he was playing defense, we had him in the dunker spot um, playing down in the post, and he was just running after the ball. It didn't matter where it is. He was just making a dead sprint for it. And every single time we had, you know, two or three opponents sitting in the post like, hey, I'm wide open. And the team was good enough to find them, and they didn't miss layups. So they went on a 10-0 run before, you know, we were just like, okay, we have to do something about this. Um, and we had a conversation, you know, pregame from some of the stuff we saw the first game of the night. Um, and we just said, like, hey, like, you got to play your position. You got to stick here. It's kind of hurting teammates. And it got to the point where we, we had to – you know, we pulled him and it was hard, but it felt right to be like, hey, look, you know, I, we know you're trying to play hard and you're literally going hard. But here's the thing, man, you're leaving your teammates out to dry. Like every time you push the ball like that, you're leaving one of your teammates to cover one or two guys. And so it was hard, um, but we pulled him you know, put him back into the game later in a different substitution, kind of the same thing. So we just kind of had to pull him and stick with the different um, lineup for the rest of the game. Yeah. Well, I think two things a little bit to provide a little bit more context for that is one, we have said to the players and the parents, like pretty much every kid's going to play equally. And in the parent meeting, I did say though, like it, it's not going to be perfect. And there may be times when we need to sub a kid out to teach them something. If, um, they're doing something that is to the detriment of the team. And like you said, like there is a time and a place to do it. Uh, it we're very okay with these kids making mistakes and learning from them. But there is a point where it's like what a kid is doing is detrimental for the team and they need to understand it. And then to give them another chance, go back in and let's fix it now. Because um, like you said, like this kid is athletic for his age and he's kind of like 
uh, like the image in my head is like, he's like a wild stein. He just is like, he, because he's more athletic and a little bit bigger than most kids, he's been able to get away with really bad habits. But now uh, that some of the other kids are catching up to him physically and just perceptually with the game, uh, if he does those things, it will hurt the team. And so I think, yeah, what you said there is great. Like there, are, there's a time and a place to do that, and it's totally appropriate to to do it because it's ultimately trying to help them understand what's best for the team. Uh, I love number two. You said this positive reinforcement is fantastic. Say more about that. Yeah, so that's one of the things. Uh, <clears throat> growing up in a small town, you know, coaching. Um, growing up in a small town, playing your your coaches. The coaches I had typically came at you with, hey, you just messed up here, go run foul poles. Or, hey, you messed up here, sub you out, we'll run something different. Um, and for me, you know, that always, it, it didn't feel good. You know, running doesn't feel good. Um, any type of punishment doesn't feel good. So, um, and this was actually one of the things that I've kind of learned from, you know, listening to the podcast of Listen of Yours, um, whether I'm... Uh, editing or whatever, or listening to audio. Um, I hate to say editing, you do all the editing. But um, positive reinforcement is fantastic. You know, you, you got these fifth graders, and if, th- if this kid's wide open, he takes a three, literally no one on him, and he just rims it or misses it, that was a great shot. You know, he should have taken that. And it's one of those things, you know, they put their head down and kind of hang it because they missed the shot. But the, the thing is, is like, you got to reinforce that type of behavior. Like, Hey, that was a good shot. I want you to take that 10 times out of 10 times. Oh, yeah. No one was on you. Take that. It doesn't matter if you miss it. If it's a wide open layup and you don't, you don't make it, you know, that was a good shot. Don't hang For your sure. head, you know, going, oh, I missed this. Know that you made the correct decision there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't the matter how it works the out. Outcome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, the, um, the thing that comes to my mind with that is I had a kid on this team last year uh, when they were U10s. And there was a time in transition where he had the ball and he was dribbling down uh, kind of the left side of the court and he had a teammate in front of them cutting, cutting to the basket. And he tried to throw a one handed kind of wrap around bounce pass to a defender or around a defender to his teammate that would have resulted in a wide open layup. And he tries to throw this pass and he just doesn't have the strength to get it there yet. I think it bounced off the defender's foot or the defender might have even stole it. I don't know. But the fact that he saw that that was the right pass and he attempted to make it, myself and my other assistant coach last year were like, yes, throw that pass every time. Because we know as he gets bigger and grows, he is going to be able to execute the actual physical skill of it. And what's actually more important is that they learn to make the right decision. So like you're saying, like if you shoot an open shot, yes, we're going to positively reinforce that. We're not going to be attached to the outcome here. And, and coaches, if you're listening and you want to um, hear or see a little bit more about how we framed that with our teams, I shared a two-minute video on Twitter a couple of days ago um, about a discussion we had to have with our team during one practice because kids are getting mad at themselves for missing good shots. And so we had to kind of set the stage of how we think about good and bad shots and like greg, greg said like we've got to positively reinforce it when they make the right decision uh and number three greg you said uh no negative talk or eliminating negative talk so and i don't know what happened but give me a little bit of context what what did you learn with that and the two games all right so this is probably my favorite one i don't know, like all eight i put down we have one player in particular who is athletic enough and smart enough to like make plays and make things happen, right? But if something doesn't go his way, his first thing is head down and literally it first words out of his mouth, man, I suck. And it's just like, dude, no, you don't. Like, <laughs> it's one of those things where like you can see it from the outside, but you know what happens? Like, it's human nature. You mess up on something, you kind of hang your head. You, 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 you turn inward on yourself and go like, man, I'm, I'm not good at this. Um. And this is towards self. Uh, there's two points to this, towards self and towards others. Um, but, like, that negative talk to yourself, like, you miss a wide-open shot, and you go, oh, you, oh, I suck. No, you don't. Like, the thing is, is that, like, you get reps. This isn't it. Like, you're going to keep getting reps. Um, so one of the things that um, it hit me second half of the first game was, like, hey, don't be telling yourself that. Like, if you take a good shot and it misses, 
we go, okay, we get to go again. Um, so that's one of the things that kind of hit me second half was just going like, like I do it too, you know, I'll be mowing the lawn and I'll, you know, like run over a rock and throw it through a window or something like, man, I suck. No, <laughs> that was an accident. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like I didn't see that rock. I'm just that mowing. Done that before. That's hilarious. Uh, I've done it twice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but like the, the the thing is, like I don't suck. Like yeah. I was doing the right thing, and just something bad happened. Um, yeah. and the other is towards others. Wait, like so you know, someone you, takes. Yeah, and did you address that with him or the whole team? Did you say like? Oh, hundred percent addressed yeah. it with him. What you so say? I didn't. Um, pulled him aside and be like, "Hey, man, like you know, I heard that under your breath. Like, hey, I suck. Like, no, you don't. Like, you've played fantastic this entire game. Like, high energy, constantly smiling." making good decisions you make one bad shot and you tell yourself you're sick you know you don't suck like that was just like a shot that didn't go in like you're gonna get better at that um kind of told him to knock it out yeah i love it and so in the and as a team level you said it was happening a little bit too and what'd you say there yeah so you know we had some on the floor commanding um going on from a couple players like hey you know like pass it here he was wide open blah 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 this this is this um and you kind of know how it goes. They're fifth graders. They play together, and everybody kind of wants the ball. And if they didn't get it and they were wide open, they're going to throw a fit about it. But it was one of the things we stopped instantly, brought them over to the bench, you know, at halftime. And I said, hey, I don't want to hear any coaching on the floor unless it's positive. Like, if somebody on your team does something good, if they miss a shot that's wide open or make a shot that's wide open, um, or, you know, make the right decision in this case, even if it works out or works that's not, or doesn't work out, like, praise that. Say, hey, that was good. Um and that changed for a lot of players. You know, there was a couple that didn't catch on. Um, and there's a couple who just aren't vocal, um, a little bit introverted. But when you get caught on and people were doing it. And, like, after that point, you know, um, I remember one of our players hit a wide open three. And after that, it was literally like the entire team celebrated to the point where, like, hey, get back on defense. You know, this is turning over. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> you know, you're on D now. You got to defend. And they're all, like, you know, doing – you know, like hand gestures yeah. to each other. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that was great. It. I want to celebrate too. But For sure. Well, and I think, you do it. And, well, and to give a little bit more context, this team has only practiced four times together. Uh, I was there for the first two, missed the third and fourth one. <clears throat> And so the, some of those situations that they just haven't arisen yet in practice, but I'm glad you guys addressed it today in games. Cause it's like, we want these kids to get to a place where they can actually coach each other constructively and positively, but they do have to, um, they've got to learn how, and that's something that we have to teach them guys. Um, it's okay to coach your teammate. Um, you just have to do it like this. Hey, Greg, next time, make sure you peek because I was wide open at the rim. Like, and and then for the other kid to be able to respond to it and say, oh, yeah, my bad. Like, I've got you. I got you next time. Uh, most of them don't have those skills yet. Um, but I think like what you said, it's it's so important that you actually address it. Because for a lot of a lot of kids in sports, like coaches aren't very conscious of sometimes some coaches aren't very conscien- conscious of the behaviors and the way the environment is being shaped peer-to-peer interaction wise and if you're not intentional about that uh yeah it it can just wreck the environment that's really good uh number four number four you said serve your players say more about that what'd you learn today that might have been the biggest one i have no idea why i put it at number four but a lot of times like as i view some of the coaches i've had in the past i just knew they were there to make decisions and those those decisions affected me uh, either positive or not. And one of the things that I kind of figured out today is these guys actually kind of rely on you. You know, they're looking at you to either A, provide feedback, or B, make decisions that influence the game. So you, you kind of have to serve your players. Um, so for instance, yeah, like we're there leading, but if you see someone struggling with this or exceeding at that, you kind of got to like, I guess more or less enforce it. I think maybe serves a bad word, but like you got to be there for them. Like you're kind of that lean on shoulder. These are like, these kids are in fifth grade and in fifth grade, I can't make any, I can't imagine myself trying to make any decision that would influence anything. Um, so yeah, for I think these guys I, right I, there. Yeah, it, it is. It is a good point. Like they are looking to us sometimes too much because we do want to. And as the season goes, like, 
give them more like, hey, you can make a decision here. Um, like you don't need us for everything. You can solve some of these problems. But also at the same time, I, and I think what you're getting at maybe is like, it's just not about us. Like we're there to serve them. We're there for them. And, and definitely like they need, <laughs> these fifth graders need much more guidance with some basketball specific stuff at times than my ninth graders do or, or older kids. So yeah, I think, I think that's a great point there as well. Uh, well, yeah, you summed it up perfectly. Good. Number five, encourage players that step up and lead positively to keep doing it. Anything yeah, you'd add so, to that? I mean, that's, that's a great one in and of itself, <laughs> but is there anything you'd add? So this is going to kind of like point back towards three where, you know, no negative self-talk. Um, there was a point where one player that we ended up having to pull off um, in the first game was literally like field generaling it. Like he was out there going, uh, like pointing, you know, he was in his zone at this point. So he was actually, you know, kind of doing what we told him to. But he was pointing like yelling screen. He was uh, pointing like move here, move there. Um, and, and you kind of got to encourage that because he was right. Like, he was reading the game, and he was 100% correct. So whenever players start doing something like that, like you got to enforce that. Be like, hey, good vocalization, way to talk, way to step it up, way to let your, you know, your teammates know what's going on. Um, yeah, what we It was actually really repeated. fun to see. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, and like, you got to praise the model at times. Like, guys, we need more of that from, from everybody. Um, <clears throat> and it'll be uncomfortable for kids. Like, not everyone's going to do it. But to recognize when someone gets outside their comfort zone and then encourage others to do the same. Um, and so the, and they know too, that like when I go outside my comfort zone and do something new, something uncomfortable, I'm going to be recognized. Like I'm going to be celebrated and seen for it uh, in this environment. I think, I think it's huge. And I think that yep. goes into number six really well, focus on preaching values to players, let them know the standard, say a little bit more about that. Well, that's 100%. So two of the things that we talk about um, whenever we um, praise players at the end, one is selflessness. Um, Luke, you want to go over the other two? Yeah, sorry. Had a call. <laughs> Wait, oh, did you say me go over them? I thought say I thought yeah yeah okay so oh, we got yeah, we got three yeah. standards oh, hit, hit with the three standards yeah well selfless excellent and fun those are the things yeah, we celebrate we kids for when we see them live those uh, out bingo and um, the main reason I sleep to do that is because I had a brain fart and I can't remember um, so we get a, we're working on preaching those to the players let them know like you know everybody's gonna get equal playing time um, starters aren't starters they're just the ones we pick to actually begin the game. Um, so one of the things like we talked about with, uh, one of the kids we sat down, is like, Hey man, you, you, this isn't selflessness and this isn't ex excellence. This is, you're playing really hard and we understand that you're playing really hard, but you're leaving things open. Um, but one of the kids kind of, kind of had his head down, you know, most of the game and he was playing well, but every single thing that went negatively it just looked like he didn't want to be there anymore. And so that's one of the things like, let them, let you let your players know the values that you're setting. Like, Hey, this is what we want to see. Like, yeah, maybe sometimes you have to fake it, but you know, fake it till you make it. And so letting them know that we're, we're looking at selflessness. We're looking at excellence and we're looking at having fun. Um, fun's going to come if the other two are done. So one of the things that we did, um, halftime of the second game that we got smoked in was just letting them know like, Hey, like, you know, we know we're down, and we know you want to drive, but make sure you look for the open pass. Um, and that selflessness pours into excellence. And once those two are done, fun happens. So, yeah, uh, let I, them know the values. Yeah, you, you have to. Everything needs to be tied back. And I think it's important, like that conversation you had to have with that kid that needed to be taken out is, hey, this isn't this isn't selflessness right now. Uh, this isn't us, right? It's it's helping kids understand this is us and this is not us. This is how we do things here. This is what's important to us. And then really attaching it to behaviors. When you do this, this is not selfless. This is selfish, right? Um, when you do this, this isn't excellence. When we do things like this, this is excellence. <clears throat> so I love that you guys 
tied it back to that today. And and then like you mentioned, like that's what we celebrate too at the end of every practice and games is, you know, where did we see kids live out those values and, and recognize for it? Because like this is te- this is teaching them character. This is teaching them values. It's it's pointing out the behaviors that um yeah, lead to lead to that long term success and, and also performance in, in the game too, because we want them to perform well. So um, number seven, this is a good one. Uh, when a player is playing below what you know they can do, don't tell them they're failing. Let them know uh, you know and have seen what they're capable of and bring that out of them. Say more about that. Uh, this is probably my favorite point. Uh, said You've that. said that on four <laughs> points now. <laughs> all right. These are all my favorite points, but this is number one that. of my favorite points. I think points. every listener will appreciate that. He said that four <laughs> times now. This is my favorite. This one should have been number one. All right. Okay. So this one's actually your favorite. You can talk about it. Um, so this one, this one kind of hits home for me. Um, you know, there, there's been plenty of times where I've, I've given half effort, you know, whether it's playing baseball or football, like I, I've definitely given half effort and I know I've been given half effort, uh, where I know I'm trying to do what I think is right. Um, and we have one player in particular, and I don't think I've mentioned him yet, but it was one of those things where we, we, we had him playing sniper out on the wing and we've been working on spacing in practice. And I will say one thing, like our team was fantastic at spacing, but once they spaced, they didn't move. It was almost like it was like freeze tag. They just hit there and stayed. Um, and one kid in particular to the point where it was kind of like, you know, hurting people. And I know that one, Hey, this kid can shoot. He might be our best shooter. Um, and two, I know he knows how to play the game. And so after the first game, it happened during the first game, uh, which we won, which was fantastic. It was great. Um, but after the first game, I kind of pulled him aside and we had 30 minutes. And I was like, hey, man, like, like, one, it doesn't look like you're having fun. But two, like, I, I, I know you're better than this. And I know you want to space. I know we talked about it in practice. But you got to make the you, you got to move. You got to, you know, once you hit your position. If everybody's like crashing over to the right side, making trying to make something happen, like you're just kind of standing there, you know, getting in a position where you can make a play, um, and keep your head up, you know, like you're actually good at this, and I don't know if he actually knows that, um, because I know he has a a brother similar age, and they're kind of competitive with each other, um, and that changes that changes to the point when we were down. Um, in the last game versus last team, he made that final lineup that we put back in to put us back, uh, get us back in the game, and he did a fantastic job. Uh, caused a turnover, got in people's faces. Um, drew, I think he drew two fouls within like two minutes, and it was one of those things where I was just like, okay, like I knew you had it in you, I didn't know you had this in you. Um, so positive reinforcements, encouraging a player, no, letting them know that they're good. Yeah, like, no, I, lo- I, I think the- it, it, what we're doing is, <coughs> I mean, we're talking about one, their aspirations, like we know that they want to be a good player, probably play at the next level, but then also we're just reminding them of what they're capable of. I, uh, a friend of mine, JP Nurbin, um, a uh, fellow coaching podcaster, uh, uses the phrase calling up, has a has a book titled that as well. And I love that phrase too. It's like, you're just calling them up. I know that you can reach these standards. I know that you're capable of this. And that's what I want to see. And that's just, it's just powerful. Like it's powerful when someone says, I know you're capable of reaching this level and I want to see you do it. And I'll help you do it, right? I'll support you as you get there. That's really, really good. So that was number seven. Last one, number eight, create accountability with players. Say a little bit more about that. Okay, so this goes back to one of the players we've touched on a bit. Um, like, let him know. Let him know that, uh, you, you, you know, you're playing five on five. This isn't 1v5. Like, that is... There, any team sport, that is one of the most cornerstone type of things is accountability with yourself. You can either make or break your team. Um, and I told this player, I was like, Man, you, you're literally stronger and faster than anyone on the other team, but you're hurting your team by not playing your position. Um, and I told him, I was like, dude, you're trying to cover all five of these people, and every te- single time you move with the ball, you're making one of your other teammates cover two people. Like, create accountability. Let them know. That, yeah. Like, yeah. Look, I, I, here's the thing. I think some coaches will be 
wrongly think that oh positive reinforcement all the stuff it's soft we're not going to talk about mistakes that's not the case like we'll still address um we'll still address mistakes errors especially things that are hurting the team <clears throat> and like we talked about earlier like it has it has to be addressed it'll infect your whole team everyone will be mad at this kid if you as the coach aren't willing to address what's going on and especially at this u11 age like he may just like be unaware of it kind of like we said earlier, like he's gotten away with these bad habits before because he's a little bit more athletic and he like he doesn't totally understand it. Maybe he hasn't had a coach that's willing to tell him the truth. Um, and and like as coaches, that's our responsibility. We have to tell each other the truth. And when you are, especially in team sports, where as the coach, there's this this massive power dynamic that we hold over our players, like right or wrong, it's just the way that it is because we have the title and we have the whistle. We hold the power. <clears throat> And if we're not willing to have the hard conversations and to create some of that accountability, hey, this is how we do it here. You've, you've got to do it this way. Um, because if you don't, it hurts everybody. It hurts the entire team. And I, it, it's crucial. Like, we have to do it. Uh, we can't shy away from those hard conversations. And especially, like, as the leader, it has to come from us. And, and, and yes, we want to get to a place where there's peer-to-peer -peer accountability. That's awesome. We aspire to that. But as the leader, you've got to be willing to have the hard conversations because, yeah, it would, put, it would especially early on, if you tried to have a, like a kid hold this other kid accountable at, at that point, it probably wouldn't go over very well um, peer to peer. It has to be, hey, this isn't how we do it here. And, and helping him see this is the result of what you're doing. When you're doing this, this is what it's leading to. And, and like you said, like, that's, um, yeah. It's it's hard. It's hard as a coach to do, and it's probably it probably was. I'm guessing hard for him to hear a little bit. Um, but I'm even thinking, you know, we have practice tomorrow, and it's something I'm going to intentionally get a, a one on one with this kid where I just ask him about the games and see if he brings some of these things up uh, before practice, and then hopefully you and I can be reinforcing throughout the practice when he does it right, catch him doing it right, catch him playing his role, um, not leaving his teammates out to dry trying to do his own thing. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I think one of the another thing I didn't necessarily learn this comes from other aspects in life um, was things are bigger than the sport. Honestly, if, if if someone has their head down or they're kind of you know sulking, even if it's off the ball or whatever, they're kind of like out of it, not really listening to what you say. There there could be other driving aspects. So, oh yeah, uh, I do. Th there's yeah, a, these there's kids a have learned to, to respond yeah. in these ways. Be because of the experiences they've had like you know one of our players you mentioned earlier that <clears throat> played really well makes one mistake really hang his head like the kid probably just hasn't built the resiliency muscle right he 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 hasn't built it yet well, for whatever reason i don't know and i don't know everything going on in these kids lives but you make a great point there's lots of things going on outside of the game that can be affecting how kids show up you know even the kid we have talked about a lot that we had to take out and have some of those hard conversations with um there may be things going on for him outside of basketball that are are giving him this feeling of i've got to prove myself i've got to like i got it i got to do things you know and so i think it's important for us to recognize that too i think it's a great a great note to end it on and and an important reminder for all of us those eight things were awesome but then to wrap it up like it's it's about more than the game and we really have no idea what's going on in kids' life. Unless we ask. Yeah, Greg, that's this is amazing. On. Incredible podcast guest. Great assistant coach. I laughed yeah, well, quite a bit during this episode. <laughs> so and like I said, these you are know, pretty much unedited. So I hope people enjoy listening to it. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll revisit this as a, a coach learning what he is doing yes exactly Part i think two. we for sure will and we'll get we have uh, uh another assistant coach as well preston um who it's also his first experience coaching basketball and coaching youth sports um who got married the other night so he wasn't at these games either but we'll have to get him on one of these soon um and it'll just be a great time and hopefully people learn a little bit while we have some fun that sounds good to me i mean you have my number, so I can't run from you. So yeah. go ahead and ask me whenever. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I roped these guys into doing it for sure. Uh, well, coaches, thanks for listening. Appreciate you taking the time. Hope you found it valuable. Uh, love those eight things that Greg shared. Hope you uh, have some, some nugget in there that you can apply in your coaching. Um, if you want to learn more about how we serve 
coaches uh, and organizations, you can go to cuttingedgecoach.com. Uh, you can connect with me or Cutting Edge Coaching on Twitter uh, for more content. We'll be sharing some content uh, throughout this U11 basketball season, more podcast reflections, and uh, some videos as well on Twitter. So thanks for listening.